SnapDeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC, education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your guest. And our, I mean, I'll be your host. The guest today is going to be Sean Brown of SnapTech IT. Hello, Sean. How are you? I'm good. Hey, if you want to change roles, we can do that. You can be the <laughs> guest, and I'll be the host. No, I like just asking the questions. <laughs> we have such a riveting topic today that we are going to be talking about, which is the POAM. So please, for the audience, explain to those who don't know what that is, what is that? First, I'd say it's probably one of the worst acronyms I've ever seen, right? Uh, who comes up with this stuff? But uh, POAM is basically a plan of action and milestones. So it's a tool that we use um, in, you know, IT security and compliance. Uh, but specifically, you know, we're talking about CMMC. So we'd say it's a, it's a tool you can use to kind of, you know, create this kind of plan of actions that have these milestones. And we'll kind of get into a little bit about what kind of data you want to put into this um, plan of action document. Mm -hmm. A so, little bit of a roadmap, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what it is. I mean, think of it as just kind of a useful tool um, that you're using and it's nothing special. I mean, I've seen them done and Excel you know, spreadsheets and now there's some software that you can use to, um, to, to kind of create these kind of living documents that you're going to kind of work out of um, as you kind of go through this process a little bit. So, All right. So what are the benefits of having one of these? Yeah. So good question. So um, first, you know, how you're going to get to this kind of document and some of this information is kind of going through a gap analysis. So some of the benefits are, hey, let's get a gap analysis done or kind of a an early assessment done to kind of figure out um, where we might have deficiencies or vulnerabilities or risk inside the organization. And then we're going to use this POAM document or this plan of action and milestones um, to create a list of things that we need to get, you know, adjusted, changed, corrected, fixed inside the environment. So it's a great tool that uh, that companies can use to kind of hold themselves accountable. Um, like I said, it's kind of a living document that you'll do. Um, it's a great way to kind of document some risk in the environment as well. Um, we'll get into some of the details, but, you know, cost, you know, you put some cost information in there, who's kind of responsible for different things. So it's a great accountability tool that you can use in your organization. Well, I agree with you 100%. One thing that makes me a little bit nervous with CMMC is that, as before, with NIST 800-171, you could have one. But with CMMC, you can't have one. I, I don't know how they're going to to work around it. You know, not work around it. Just, you know, it's the, the POEM is going to help you. Like, oh, this is stuff we still need to do, right? Moving forward as we're getting more and more cyber secure and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know how they're going to uh, deal with this. But right. that's what I'm talking about right now. So, <laughs> okay. Anyway, back on track here. So what are the key points to keep in mind when you are creating the POEM? Yeah, so I'd say the first thing is this is not a document that you use just to check a box that you've got one. Like I said, this is a living document that you really need to be engaged with uh, as a good kind of planning tool to track, you know, where you've got those deficiencies or where you have those risks. Um, and it's just a, a, a great tool to use to, you know, kind of document all that information and to work through the process, you know. You know, we talk to people all the time about CMMC, and it's it's not necessarily a, uh, a destination. It's really a journey, and this is a tool to kind of help guide you down that path, um, kind of from where you're at to kind of whatever level you're trying to reach. And so this is that kind of roadmap to help get you from point A to, to point B. Yeah, which is going to be very key, especially for some people who maybe might have not been doing exactly what they need to do. And so let's right. get it all out there on the on the POEM and then yeah. start attacking things. The, the so, other thing that I would say about that, too, is um, this is not just a technology or an IT department tool. Uh, this is something that you need to think bigger than that. You need to think the entire organization 
uh, needs to leverage this. Uh, you also need to make sure that you've got kind of executive buy-in and that they're aware of kind of what's going on as well. So don't isolate you know, this or don't think about this as just an isolated tool just in the IT department for you know, us, us tech nerds. Um, this is more of an organizational kind of risk document um, that the entire organization needs to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially for like the security and awareness training for the general non-technical employees. And, and, yeah, great example. Yeah. You know, like the physical log, you know, and visitor log, when for, you know, who's physically in the building kind of thing, you know, if you don't have one of those, that's got to go on there, that kind of thing too. So yeah, it does involve everybody. Employee background checks. There's tons of things that touch you know, HR and finance and, and things like that, that, that all relate and that could be um, documented and, and put on this POAM tool. Mm -hmm. All right, so where are we here? So we're going here. So, okay, what specific types of information should be in an effective POAM? Yep, so there's a lot of different templates that you'll see and that you can get online. Pretty easy to go find some. Uh, for us, we've got a, you know, a specific template that we use and there's some some definitely some uh, pertinent information that needs to be on there. So, you know, call number one, if we're thinking columns, if you're thinking kind of an Excel spreadsheet, because I think that's pretty easy to kind of picture. Uh, column number one, you know, we, we create just an ID, some kind of identifier that makes it easy to, uh, to, to be able to reference. Um, the second column, we like to, to kind of reference the security control that this you know vulnerability or risk may be associated to so i think column two kind of a security control column three we have as a weakness so what's the you know kind of um the issue that or the vulnerability or the risk that we've identified the next column is our description so how is this you know kind of identified uh, give me a little bit more detail on this specific uh, kind of risk or vulnerability that we're adding into the POAM. Uh, the next column over is a severity level. So think kind of high, medium, low, or you know, uh, whatever severity levels you like to use. But think of a severity level just so that we can kind of understand the impact and risk associated with this specific uh, line item. Uh, cost is the next column. And so whether that be a budgetary dollar amount to you know, correct this issue or whether it's maybe it's more of a resource an internal resource allocation or some kind of cost it's, it's good just to kind of understand that from a budgeting and planning standpoint then we want to know um, who is the point of contact or who's responsible for it or um, is this related to a specific department so i like to see a single person responsible because when multiple people are responsible nobody is responsible so we like to put a single point of contact on there as the responsible person uh, the next column over is our planned start date so when do we plan on starting to remediate this uh, what's our plan finish date is the next column and then the big section is this milestone and the milestone uh, is where you're going to document and provide your, your steps or your big steps uh, to remediate this project or remediate this vulnerability. So inside there, um, think about, you could also create kind of interim steps, if you will, inside this, where there might be additional dates. Like for example, if to use your security awareness training uh, example that you referenced earlier, um, we may have dates, you know, hey, we're going to start this on a certain date. We should be finished with this project on a certain date. And inside of our milestone section, we can put, you know, hey, on, you know, whatever date, October 1st, we want to be able to do this piece. And on October 10th, we're going to do this other main piece of the milestone. Um, so we're going to document the major steps inside that milestone. Um, the next column over is the actual start date. So how well did we uh, plan and how well did we actually start it? Our actual completion date. And then the last kind of column is the status. You know, is this an ongoing thing or have we completed it? So that's kind of the, the columns and, and the document, the information that we like to document when we're doing this doc, this kind of POEM document. 
That's really good. That's got a lot of awesome information in there. And I also like the idea about putting how much the anticipated budget is going to be required for this. So as you're making this list, you can kind of keep in mind, hmm, this is adding up. So I better you know, make sure I keep looking at the bottom for what the, the total is. So that was really good. And then this kind of ties into our next question about the, um, the milestones. And you mentioned it a little bit in there about how you can kind of break them down. Is there anything else you want to say about how milestones are used? Um, yeah. I mean, if you've got a bigger task, um, you may end up breaking this um, milestones into multiple kind of line items. If we're kind of going back and visually thinking about that Excel spreadsheet. Um, so it depends on how you want to, you know, again, how big it is and how big of a, a project or, or thing that we're solving is you might want to break it into multiple line items in different phases. Um, but for the most part, a majority of them will be on a single line item, and then you'll just document multiple um, kind of steps inside or multiple milestones inside of a specific line item. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got an automated tool to kind of help you do this, you know, ticket, tickets always work really well. So if you've got some kind of online software where you can document you know, kind of in a project management software and then kind of reference that. I've seen that done as well as a way to kind of track those milestones. And breaking it down into steps or, you know, baby milestones or whatever we're going to call it, that kind of helps people wrap their head around it because it's, you know, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Not that any of us would ever want to eat an elephant, but, you know, when right. it's a big task like that, it's, it's yeah, okay, I can check, I can check the box. I got a little bit of it done. So that's good. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, so do you have any other tips for us before we go on a lovely poem? Yeah, I'll just, you know, remember when it relates to CMMC, um, you know, as you uh, achieve different levels, these things are passes or fails. Um, and so creating good documentation on this poem document will set you up for success um, as as you uh, do those gap analysis and create this kind of plan and action and milestone. I would say um, make this thing, it, it, it's not a box that you're going to check. You know, the more quality information you can put into that and the more planning you can put into that um, as you work with RPOs or as you work with, you know, as going through your audit, um, they're going to want to see this. They're going to want to see the level of detail and, you know, how serious you took doing this kind of plan and action and milestone document. Um, so that's important. The, the other kind of tip that I would say is um, when you complete something, don't delete it out mm. or archive it out. Uh, keep, keep this as a living working document so that you can show good evidence of kind of, hey, I, I went through my gap analysis. I understood where I was. We put together this plan. And we're executing on our plan. Um, so don't delete those line items out. Keep them in the document um, because you want to be able to, to show that evidence and that track record of kind of where you've been and, and where you're going. Yeah, that's a great point about the evidence. It's also a good way to, uh, you know, help yourself feel better about, wow, look at how much we've gotten done. <laughs> that's exactly right. There's definitely some, um, you know, mental games and, and uh, you know, accomplishments that, uh, that feel good whenever you can change one of those statuses from, from ongoing to completed. So no doubt. All right. Well, thank you very, very much for your time, Sean. I appreciate that very, very much. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Good seeing you again. All right. Well, thank you for everybody for listening. And we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. And take care in the meantime. Bye-bye. SnapTech IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com.